MSU's president flies from Lansing to D.C. to talk to Congress. I'll tell you what John Engler is expected to testify about coming up. Families in Chesterfield Township want to know why a busy fire station is shutting down even after voters approved two fire millages. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. It's a tough pill to swallow, and tonight's board meeting drew a big crowd of people wanting answers. This is one of Macomb County's busiest fire departments. Now, this is just so far this year. Chesterfield Fire has already had 1,728 calls for service. Priya Mann live outside the meeting. Uh, uh, just ended, I understand, Priya. It just ended and there is a lot of anger in this community. Only 18 firefighters. That's down from 28 firefighters. There is no chief. There's no deputy chief. And now a station that services more than 3,000 homes has been closed. And it was a packed board meeting today. A lot of people here supporting their firefighters after the sudden news that a fire station was suddenly closed. The board of trustees says fire station number two was in deplorable conditions with numerous building and fire code violations. And the fire station in question sits across from a bunch of homes on Jefferson and Forbes. The two firefighters stationed there daily have now been moved three to four miles away and residents, of course, concerned about increased response times. Now, let me give you the backstory here. Over the last decade, voters have approved two fire millages. Then last year, the newly formed Public Safety District created one millage for both its police and fire departments. And the sudden closure of this station comes as the firefighters union is negotiating its contract. And the supervisor here says he believes that this uh, is a media hoopla, that he feels that these folks are behind this issue. They are trying to make uh, this fire station closing a bigger issue than it is. He says response times will not decrease. People here obviously had very different opinions. There was a lot of anger, a lot of pointed fingers. We'll continue to follow this story as those contract negotiations are still underway. Reporting live from Chesterfield Township, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. Yeah, the math is working out. I, I, I'm sure a lot of people at home are doing it as well. Eight a day, that's an awful lot of calls uh, only halfway through the year here. Yeah, that's right. And the people here are frustrated. You know, they have approved two millages. Then this public district is created. This public safety district is created. Both millages, they're combined into one. They're concerned about where the money is being spent. Yeah. Now that fire station two, it is sitting empty. Those two firefighters uh, who were stationed there have been moved three to four miles away. So a lot of concern here about those response times as well. Yeah, you bet. All right, Priya. The next step in making things right for those whom Larry Nasser abused comes in just a few hours. Michigan State University interim president John Engler is set to testify before Congress about what he's been doing to make sure another predator like Nasser is never able to operate at Michigan State University again. Jermont Terry is live with what to expect at tomorrow's hearing. Jermont, good evening. Good evening, Kimberly. In a few hours, Engler will answer some very tough questions from those on Capitol Hill. As you know, he was not the president when the Larry Sk Nasser scandal broke, but many have questioned since stepping into that presidency role whether or not he can move the university forward. Tomorrow, he explains. Michigan State University interim president John Engler will sit down and answer questions from those on the U.S. Senate subcommittee. The same committee has held several meetings about MSU's handling of Dr. Larry Nasser. Nasser is serving what's essentially a life sentence for sexually assaulting hundreds of young women and girls, all gymnasts, who sought treatment from the MSU doctor. Many of Nasser's survivors have testified. The U.S. Gymnastics Director talked to the Senate Committee and MSU former President Luann Simon all explained what they reported, what they knew, and what did or did not happen during all those years of sexual abuse. Now it's Engler's turn to go on the record. Tuesday's hearing is set to explain what changes have been made by the university to protect young athletes from sexual predators such as Nasser. Back in June, Engler found himself on the defensive after a private email revealed Engler questioned Rachel Denhollander, the first woman to speak out against Nasser. He asked if she was receiving kickbacks. I am so disappointed in you. Don't you have a heart? That sent people demanding Engler resign or be fired by the Board of Trustees. They argued Engler is not the person to move MSU forward. Engler stated, that was a big mistake. I was wrong. I apologize. He added, that email harmed the healing process. Now on Tuesday, he explains to Congress what he's done for the healing process and the future of those coming on campus. 
Engler has no plans to remain as MSU's president on a full-time basis. However, he made it very clear that there is no chance that he is stepping down and or resigning. Now, there is no indication as to how long his hearing will take place on Capitol Hill, but we will have his remarks online and on TV as soon as they are available. For now, reporting live tonight, Jermont Terry, Local 4. We will indeed be following it. Okay, thanks, Jermont. Well, we had an awfully soggy weekend. Got better today. Yeah, a few peaks of sunshine yep. made it a little better. Let's check in with uh, Andrew. More rain on the way here, Andrew. Well, we have a few scattered showers that are still around the area this evening, although they are diminishing. A couple of these here farther to the north, right around Port Huron or just north of Port Huron. Same thing in Lapeer County here, just to the northwest of Lapeer itself. These are both moving to the north as they are shrinking. We also have this lighter shower here in green, just south of Ann Arbor. So Ann Arbor, Ypsilanti, you may get a light shower or a sprinkle within the next 15 to 30 minutes. A bigger cluster of thunderstorms right here, but notice they're moving almost due north. They're going to be just to the east of Port Huron here within the next two, three hours. So in the wee hours of your Tuesday morning. So most areas will basically be mostly cloudy and dry overnight. It's warm right now with 73 degrees. We'll cool off into the 60s by dawn tomorrow. But any more showers for Tuesday? We'll talk about that in your seven day forecast in minutes. All right, Andrew, a startling discovery in Canton Township when possible human remains were found in the sewer system. A crew from the Department of Public Works was doing sewer maintenance when they made the discovery near Salts and Canton Center Roads. Unclear how long the remains have been there. Investigators spent the evening removing them, trying to learn more about what might have happened. But important to point out, police do not believe uh, foul play was part of this, at least not now. A man is caught on camera robbing a subway restaurant. It happened on Adams Road in Oakland Township. Surveillance video here shows the man order a sandwich. And you can see he then pulls out a gun and demands money. He got away with about $200 and his meal. Take a good look there. It's hard to see, but if you have any information, call the Oakland County Sheriff's Office. Bank robber on the run tonight. It happened this afternoon at the Alliance Catholic Credit Union on North Main in Rochester. Deputies say this robber gave a, a teller a note saying he was armed, demanded money. He did get away with some cash. He's described as a white male in his late 20s, as you can see at the time, was wearing a red baseball hat, a gray zip hoodie, and blue jeans. If you recognize him or saw anything that might help, you're urged to contact Oakland County Sheriff's Office. You'll find a bunch of new dining options the next time you fly out of the North Terminal at Metro Airport. And fans of Jimmy Buffett might <laughs> just like what's coming. Must be tequila involved somewhere. Also, we told you at 5 o'clock someone was hurt when this building was brought down in Florida. You'll see the dramatic new video showing what sent a construction worker to the hospital. Hank. Our Help Me Hank team, we hear about scams all the time, but this new scam, it really took us by surprise. Important information to protect yourself and your family. A Help Me Hank scam alert right after the break.